When it comes to power scales and unique abilities, we've come across several kinds of characters in the anime-verse, each of whom has varying degrees of strength, agility, and intelligence. So how powerful would the ideal character be? Should they have a perfect balance of strengths and weakness? Or should their powers be more about hard work than talent? Or can a hero only have strengths and little to no weakness? There are quite a few names in the latter category, and the most popular among them might be Sadoro Gojo. The white-haired sorcerer from Jujutsu Kaisen is such an impactful Powered character that the mangaka himself, Gege Akutami, had once expressed his utter hatred towards him. Well, not all heroes are ideal, are they? Speaking of white-haired characters, MAPPA's recent release titled Hell's Paradise, Jigo Koraku, garnered a lot of applause among anime fans for its spectacular premise and an equally mesmerizing use of color throughout the series. The story begins with the execution of Gabimaru the Hollow, a legendary shinobi from the village of Iwagakure. And, in case you're wondering, no, this is not a reference to Naruto at all. In fact, the Iwagakuri in the Naruto-verse is poles apart from the one that appears in Hell's Paradise. While the Iwagakure in Naruto is known for the shinobis who use Earth-style ninjutsu, its namesake village in Hell's Paradise is one of pure gore and horror. The shinobis that hail from this village are known to be the deadliest assassins to ever exist in the history of mankind. Having been trained rigorously by the village chief himself, the shinobis of Iwagakure in Hell's Paradise are subject to inhuman degrees of pain and torture, so they can shed off their human attributes and simply become a husk of a living being. And no shinobi of Iwagakure could master this better than the protagonist himself, Gabimaru the Hollow. So who is he? How did he end up as an unstoppable killing machine? And most importantly, how powerful is our white-haired assassin? Dreams don't have any. The origins of Gabimaru in a nutshell. The pilot episode of Hell's Paradise offers much detail regarding Gabimaru's childhood and how he ended up being the legendary assassin of Iwagakure. In his interview with the Yamada Asaimon executioner Sagiri, Gabimaru talks about his life and upbringing. Although he wasn't truthful about it, his manner of speaking made it evident that the boy who wouldn't die wants to be killed off once and for all. But for now, let's focus on his life. Gabimaru was raised under the care of the village chief, who was responsible for for the murder of his own parents. In fact, the infant Gabimaru was made to see the death of his parents, which happened right in front of his eyes, while the chief looked over with much satisfaction. Given the fact that it happened very early in his life, Gabimaru cannot recall from memory the exact details of the murder and is thus incapable of developing any sort of emotion regarding what happened to his own parents. From there on, Gabimaru was assimilated into a vast group of young boys who would be trained under severe conditions to become a group of efficient ninjas. These men were expected to execute execute any and every order given by the elderly village chief without any questions asked. This is because, in the words of Gabimaru, the life of a shinobi is devoid of any great purpose. A ninja is supposed to do what is asked of him, and hence, cannot make any decision of his own volition without the fear of being disavowed by his organization. In other words, Iwagakure's army of assassins specialize in superior techniques of ninjutsu, but what adds to the edge is their unquestioned loyalty towards their village chief. So, in the grand scheme of things, where do we situate Gabimaru. Well, call it plot armor, but Gabimaru is a one-of-a-kind shinobi who is able to manifest all the attributes of the ideal ninja of Iwagakure. Gabimaru was able to develop his skills as a shinobi so well that from a very early age, he would be sent off on missions to assassinate important personalities. And with each kill, he rose through the ranks and eventually garnered the title Gabimaru the Hollow. For a person to even possess such a blood-soaked ledger, they must have let go of any morsel of guilt or regret for their actions. And Gabimaru mastered this indifference with perfection. Evident in the pilot episode, his sheer apathy towards the world as well as his own life is quite haunting to say the least. This is best expressed in the same episode when the village officials were desperately looking for ways to effectively execute Gabimaru. So is the white-haired assassin truly an unkillable entity? Let's find out in our next segment. Why can't I die? No, why won't I die? The Anatomy of Gabimaru the Hollow. Season 1 of Hell's Paradise begins with a display of Gabimaru's apathy via an important aspect of his physiology, his endurance. Gabimaru's ability to withstand severe degrees of pain and inhuman torture, as well as defend himself from any sort of attack while being restrained, is quite remarkable. Let's take a look at the three execution techniques that could have certainly killed an ordinary man, but not the likes of Gabimaru. The First Execution This is the first scene of the series. It begins with an executioner preparing to behead Gabimaru 
Kabimaru as the village officials watch the proceedings. Although it's impossible to behead someone with the very first strike, the executioner, as well as the officials, were in disbelief at the unusual sight. The blade of the sword broke apart. The executioner attempted to behead Gabimaru several times, only for the latter to look up with a disappointed expression on his face. The kind of expression that's yearning to embrace death, but just can't. So, how did the blade break in that manner? Interestingly, the answer to this question is given in the first episode quite sooner than expected. According to Sagiri's analysis, Gabimaru could have been capable of building tension around his pivot muscles with such strength that the sword would not just chip off, it would break too. The anime depicts this scene quite wonderfully, as Gabimaru is shown keeping his veins and muscles taut at the exact moment when the executioner is about to behead him. But then, can Gabimaru be pierced through or burnt alive? Well, that's exactly what happened in the next scene. The Second Execution After the failure of the beheading, the second execution was held. Here, a stake was set up with Gabimaru tied to a pole as he stood on a platform of hay. This execution was to be done by setting him on fire, in addition to oil, so that he would be scorched to death. However, to ease his pain, the village officials decided to impale him with spears first. Unfortunately for the officials, things didn't go as planned. Not only did the spears break when they came into contact with Gabimaru's body, but he also withstood the infernal fires that he was engulfed in. In one of the most phenomenal scenes of Hell's Paradise, Gabimaru's ominous eyes open up right when he's on fire and he simply walks out of it as if nothing happened at all. The main reason why he didn't get burned alive is because of the intense training he had been subjected to since his childhood. Given the kind of ninjutsu training that he had undergone, Gabimaru had inadvertently mastered the fire attribute of Tao, which is how he could not only tolerate the fire, but also incorporate it into his ninjutsu. In case you're wondering, the Tao is a life force that exists in every living and non-living being. We'll elaborate on the concept of Tao in subsequent parts of this video, but for the time being, let's look at the third execution which confirmed one important fact about our white-haired friend. The third execution. The final attempt by the village officials to kill Gabimaru once and for all was to opt for the most brutal form of execution, to tie his limbs using ropes that were attached to two bulls, pulling in two opposite directions, and ripping his body from the groin up to his chest. And, like we say every time, third time's a charm. As soon as the bulls rushed in opposite directions, the ropes were tugged on, and the two animals collided with one another in a chaotic manner, while Gabimaru looked on with a surprised yet apathetic face. The fourth execution is yet another Another instance that proves Gabimaru's physiological attributes are pyro-friendly. In other words, even if he's doused in oil and set on fire that burned at 370 degrees, he'd still walk out unscathed, except for his clothes, which would turn to ash. To emphasize the assassin's anatomical brilliance, the story further shows that the same men who started the fire sustained burns and injuries when they tried to come close to it. Well, this sheer display of strength and endurance is just the tip of the iceberg. The Achievements of Gabimaru the Assassin In the evening, on their way back, Sagiri and one of the village officials are seen exchanging a few words about Gabimaru's career as the legendary assassin of Iwagakure. It is here when the viewers are first told about his title, Gabimaru the Hollow. It can be said that his reputation precedes him. The village official describes him as a hollow man, without blood or tears, a monster who killed 20 men when he was arrested. His violent nature as a shinobi is seen once again in episode 2, when he successfully survives a horrifying bloodbath that was unleashed among the convicts on death row. In fact, he was able to kill one of the criminals, warped Kaun, with his hands tied down. In his conversation with Sagiri, the official further states that the ninjas of Iwagakure are said to consume the mythical elixir of life, said to be found in a place called Shinsenkyo. The elixir is characterized as the basis of their exceptional ninjutsu skills that, in turn, influence their own anatomies. And Gabimaru is no exception. As we see in the subsequent parts of the anime series, Gabimaru's strength, speed, and endurance are well beyond human standards. On top of that, his ninjutsu training has morphed his body in such a manner that his skin seems to be made out of steel. So, the fact that Gabimaru survived being burnt alive at the last moment may sound phenomenal, and it surely is. But this is the least impressive thing he can do with fire. All about the boy on fire. The powers, abilities, and the very title of Gabimaru. The concept of fire is commonly associated with ideas of destruction and annihilation. After all, a conflagration is capable of consuming anything in its path with its glowing flames. At the same time, fire is also synonymous with the notion of purity, that is, to purge something or someone from the impure. Gabimaru's fire-based ninjutsu is an offshoot of both these dimensions. Let's take a look at his fighting techniques. 
Gabimaru as the legendary shinobi of Iwagakure. Gabimaru possesses a kind of body that goes beyond human standards. As we discussed in the previous segment, Gabimaru's anatomy allows him to engage in stunts and actions that could not be done by an ordinary human being. Some of these include dislocating his own joints and then readjusting them back to their original positions. This might remind you of the boar-headed swordsman Inosuke from Demon Slayer. Gabimaru is also capable of stopping his heart from beating for a brief moment, which is something that Benedict Cumberbatch did in seasons 2 and 3 of the BBC Sherlock series as well. Besides this, Gabimaru can also harden his own skin at will. This is part and parcel of his unmatched endurance that is tested, time and again, throughout season 1 of Hell's Paradise. The fact that his initial struggles against the Soshin, as well as the giant convict Rokuroda, did not stop him from moving forward further justifies how durable Gabimaru's anatomy is. In addition to that, his strength and agility go in tandem with his grit and determination to go back home and reunite with his wife, Yui. The commitment he shares with his vision is such that Zhu Jin, one of the Tencent, could not help but question with undeterred admiration whether Gabimaru was actually a human being or not. So what are his abilities as the legendary shinobi of Iwagakure? Most of Gabimaru's fighting techniques consist of movements that are pyrokinetic in nature. This means that he can not only conjure flames, but he can also manipulate them to be used as lethal attacks against enemies. These Fire-based ninjutsu techniques can only be facilitated with the help of one style as its basis, the Ninpo Haiboshi, or Ninja Art Fire Monk. The Ninpo Haiboshi is initiated by first raising the body temperature so that the oil in the skin can be ignited properly, and hence, the user is able to set themselves on fire. The very idea of catching on fire as a battle tactic is crazy as well as impossible. Although he is well-versed in taijutsu as well, Gabimaru's expertise in fire-based ninjutsu is nothing short of perfection. Some of his famous pyrokinetic ninjutsu techniques include Ninpo Stone Storm, Ascetic Blaze Mode. With the Ninpo Haiboshi as the foundation of his fighting techniques, the user grabs a few rocks and hurls them at his assailants. They turn into fireballs as they approach the target. Ninpo Zephyr Weave, Ascetic Blaze Mode. Used in combination with the Ninpo Haiboshi, a user can release a fireball directly from their mouth. Ninpo Quilt of Thorns, Ascetic Blaze Mode. One of Gabimaru's most prominent moves, a user implements the Quilt of Thorns Ascetic Blaze Blaze mode by grabbing a tree, setting it on fire, and throwing it at his assailant. Ninpo Demonic Firebug Perceived as a visual spectacle of its own, the user is capable of throwing a handful of fire projectiles at their adversaries, which would then burst into bright lights to overwhelm them. Ninpo Pyro Bridge This requires the user to inhale deeply and release a huge torrent of conflagration to set his adversary on fire. Ninpo Pyro Blizzard this is basically a surge of fire that is made and surrounded by the user themselves. Ninpo Arson Judgment A serious name indeed, the Ninpo Arson Judgment is facilitated when the user kicks while his leg is on fire. And finally, Ninja Art Flower Snake Ring, which is done when the user is able to control the flames all around them. So, to summarize his relationship with fire, it goes something like this. He can create flames to inflict severe burns and injuries on his assailants, and can also withstand fire at the same time. In that case, how does our white-haired assassin respond when it comes to some of the most nerve-wracking battles ever. Gabimaru in the battlefield Gabimaru and Sagiri's fight against the gigantic convict Rokuroda is one of the most thrilling battles that we see in the first season of Hell's Paradise. As a matter of fact, it was here that we, the viewers, got a first-hand experience of Gabimaru's prowess as a powerful strategist. Raised in an organization that is meant to shape young boys into ninjas, it is expected that the Iwagakuri shinobi will be acquainted with the laws of warfare. It is indeed a spectacle to see a distinct persona of Gabimaru come apart from his general personality. On one hand, we have the young, white-haired boy who thinks along the lines of existentialism, but is willing to bet his life in order to reunite with Yui. On the other hand, we have an unstoppable killing machine that is driven more by their mind than their heart. Truth be told, no ordinary assassin is capable of the kind of violence Gabimaru partakes in solely to justify the title he has been given, that is, Gabimaru the Hollow. It is almost as if he is no longer recognizable to his peers and acquaintances when he switches to his role as a combatant. This is best shown in the Rokuroda battle scene. While Sagiri looks for the right moment to chop the giant's head off, Gabimaru takes time to foresee all the outcomes of every action that he could make use of from the present time. In other words, Gabimaru's foresight is one of a kind. It is because of his farsightedness that he can almost predict the possible moves made by his opponents by simply looking at their previous movements. Given his track record as a shinobi, Gabimaru is indeed phenomenal, but the best is yet to come. He is said to be at par with the likes of the Tencent, especially for his use of the Tao. Surprisingly, he never knew about it until his encounter with the Dushis. So, what is the Tao, and how did Gabimaru channel it within him?
It's more like I'm seeing a side of me I never knew about. How Gabi Maru discovers his Tao. As we briefed earlier in the video, the Tao refers to the life force energy that is emitted by both living as well as non-living beings. Some are able to materialize it to defend themselves or focus all their energy on one part of their body, such as Mei's golden fist. Others, however, may not even possess the ability to see the depths of one's Tao. The inhabitants of Shinsenkyo are able to visualize the Tao of the living and non-living entities around them. So, the ones with the strongest Tao are the Tensei followed by the Doshis and Mei, along with the surviving trees in Horai, as well as the horrifying Soshin that secured the outer areas of the journey only. To be precise, entities that aren't humans and reside in Shinsenkyo are capable of enriching and utilizing their Tao to the fullest extent. So, how could our white-haired assassin discover and make use of his Tao at the same time? Gabimaru's discovery of his own Tao happened in one of the most unexpected ways possible. In episode 11 of Hell's Paradise Season 1, we see Mei looking at Tamai and Gabimaru as she utters the word, strong, strong, no, weak, strong, weak, strong. She says this repeatedly as the two convicts battle against the Doshis with much aggression. In case you're wondering, the Doshi is a degree lower than the Tensin, and they study the concept of Tao while training in its usage. Another difference between the Doshis and the Tensin is that the former do not possess the attributes of both Yin and Yang, but instead have the Yang. The same applies to Mei, the young girl with pink hair who could be mistaken for Sakura. She is of a similar sort as the Doshi, but she only possesses the Yin attributes. Now, coming back to Mei's cryptic message, as both Tamai and Gabimaru fight against the insect-like hermits, Mei desperately calls out to the two convicts that their aggression is too much for them to channel their Tao. Fortunately enough, Yamada Asaimon Fuchi is able to comprehend her words and tells a frustrated Gabimaru that he must strike a balance between the weak and the strong attributes of his own mind so that he can maximize his efforts by unlocking his Tao. As Gabimaru tries hard to understand Fuchi's words, a concerned Mei comes to him and takes his hand as she says the following words. Strong, fruit of weak, weak, seed of strong. This is when Gabimaru realizes that he must embrace his own weakness in order to unlock his fullest potential. And then, a miracle happened. Gabimaru could see a white smoke light emitting from his and Mei's hands. In other words, Gabimaru could see his own Tao. By mostly getting what Fuchi wanted to tell him, the white-haired assassin prepared himself to take down his insect-like assailants once and for all. And to the horror of his enemies, there appeared a sudden surge in Gabimaru's Tao, one that was never visible before. On the other side, Mei could not suppress her astonishment to see Gabimaru's Tao strengthen so swiftly in such a short span of time. Plot armor, huh? With this, Gabimaru was now able to dodge the attacks of his assailants that were previously invisible to him. This is because now, he is able to see every single attack made by the Doshi using their own Tao. On top of that, Gabimaru's agility increased manifold as he dodged each attack with sheer finesse. This further stemmed from his ability to predict his opponent's actions by observing the silhouette of his enemy surrounded by the Tao. So, if one part of the body emitted a more intense kind of Tao, such as a hand or leg, it meant the enemy was about to use that body part to deal damage to Gabimaru. Additionally, his sixth sense got further enhanced, as he was able to detect where each person was on the battlefield, and thus decide his next course of action, quite literally. So how did Gabimaru discover, as well as get the hang of his own Tao in such a short span of time? As Tamayi explains to Fuchi in episode 11 of Hell's Paradise, the secret behind Gabimaru unlocking his Tao in an instant can be traced to his rigorous combat training. After all, the shinobis of Iwaga Kure are known for their superhuman abilities, and it wouldn't be a surprise to see the white-haired assassin unlock his Tao, that too during his battle against the Doshis. Gabimaru himself believes that the village chief may have consumed the elixir of life because of which he cannot be killed by any means. Like Tamayi, Gabimaru thinks of his own training at Iwaga Kure and wonders why he has never experienced something of that sort before. And that's when he got the answer to his question. By embracing his own weakness, he is able to recognize the weakness in others as well, which is precisely why he was able to unlock his Tao in the unlikeliest of circumstances. In the consequent chapters of the manga, we further get to witness the sheer insanity of Gabimaru's fighting techniques that reach a new crescendo with each new battle. Well, we can't really wait for the release of Season 2 of Hell's Paradise, which was announced by MAPPA immediately after the first season came to an end. So, we won't spoil the story anymore. Instead, we highly recommend you save this spectacular anime to your watch list. We assure you, you won't regret it. Marvelous Verdict! It is said that the title, The Hollow, is bestowed upon one shinobi in Iwagakure, who is considered the strongest of his generation. However, Gabimaru might have just outshone all his predecessors. We can say this with much certainty because Gabimaru is indeed a child prodigy when it comes to ninja arts. His ability to assess a situation and instantly come up with several options to take down his adversary makes him an indispensable asset to any team. And the title itself is quite fitting to the name, all thanks to his anatomy. With eyes that lack a glitter, 
and a face with no shine, Gabimaru is a husk of a human being who can overcome his adversaries, even if it means giving up his own life. But is he really hollow from the inside out? Let us know your thoughts down below so we can keep this conversation going.